Oh! Oh! <laughs> this is where the Intel processor comes in. Welcome back to another video, my friends. This inside there, the processor inside there, is an i5 11600K. The latest i5 processor, 6 core processor, one of the best processors in the world when it comes to 6 cores, or if not the best 6 core processor in the world. But the big question is, how well does it do on DaVinci Resolve? So let's find the playback on DaVinci Resolve and see if it's uh, any good. So this time I'm doing it the other way around. Usually I'm filming Premiere Pro first and then DaVinci Resolve second. This time I'm gonna start with DaVinci Resolve and then the next video you're gonna see is gonna be on Premiere Pro. So I am using DaVinci Resolve 17, Studio 17, uh, not 17.3. If you wanna know like how it improves on 17.3, then I've got another video coming out. We're gonna test, you know, exactly the same things on this and then upgrade DaVinci Resolve, see if there's any difference. But with no further ado, let's start with the timeline. This one over here is a 4k 30 frames per second 422 10 bit and if you've seen my ryzen 5 5600x video with the same setup but just ryzen 5 5600x then i'm going to show you the settings that are over there as well because these are exactly the same settings and we're going to do the test exactly the same and if there's something wrong if you see something wrong please let me know what should i change but there is um you know timeline formats these are all over here video monitoring i'm just going to scroll through these uh, settings so if you see anything slightly off just let me know what should that be and then if we go to playback over here timeline proxy mode off render cache none i haven't used any of those so th that should be that 4k 30 frames per second 422 playing it back 24 frames per second 422 is quite hard because it's um, not hardware accelerated this is h264 So it seems like that's no problem over there. This is 422 10-bit as well, just 25 frames per second. It, that's interesting. The 30 frames plays back a bit better than this 25 fr five frames. 25 frames one over here seems a little bit laggy. But if you press play, it's still going to play it back, no problem. The timeline, like when you click through it, it's very, very, very good. This is a 4K SI, 25 frames per second, 422 10-bit. So it's a little bit easier codec, less compressed, a little bit easier to edit. As you can see, look at the timeline performance. Super, super, super smooth. Okay, 4K, 30 frames per second. Any 4K from mirrorless cameras, it will be fine. Because this is 422, 420 will be even easier to edit, so you don't need to worry about that if you have 420. Let's have a look at 4K, 60 frames per second. A bit more frames on the timeline now. This is 420, 8-bit. So 8-bit is a little bit easier over here, especially if it's 420. This is Hacer 264. Seems completely fine. Let's move on to 422 10-bit, 60 frames per second. See, that is a little bit harder to play back. As you can see, like timeline isn't so good, but when you press play, it's still gonna be okay. As you can see, the GPU is not playing it back at the moment, but the CPU is. But the GPU was playing back this previous 4K 60 frames per second 420 8-bit, because that is hardware accelerated, so it uses the graphics cards and Venk to play it back. But timeline performance honestly is fine so any 4k footage you have from your mirrorless cameras 60 frames per second or less it will be fine now let's have a look at a h265 which is a high efficiency codec a little bit different codec here 420 so this is hardware accelerated as well it's super smooth as you can see when i press play look video decode so the gpu is doing that work okay let's move on to 420 10 bit 24 frames per second h265 that's no problem there either now this is h265 but 422 which means this should be software accelerated oh oh <laughs> this is where the intel processor comes in look at this okay i see check this out so any h265 codecs are actually hardware accelerated on the intel igpu and that's why it's playing it back so well as you can see look the igpu inside the processor is doing the video decoding back 
and that's why it's so smooth compared to like all the other ones so let's just have a look how the hardware like actually acts to this footage over there on and the h265 so h265 this is 420 10 bit we'll just like scrolling through timeline over here a little bit we're gonna press play let's see what plays it back see in here now it's the Nvidia GPU that plays this back because this is 420 10-bit 420 is accelerated through NVENC Let's move to the next one. We're gonna press play over here timeline performance is Very very similar Very good. Let's just press play See what happens here. What plays it back now? This is 420 10-bit as well because it's 420 uh, it's still on the NVIDIA GPU, but if we go to this one, check this out, boom. Suddenly the Intel iGPU inside the processor is playing it back because Intel's upgraded to the um, iGPU and now there's like an actual hardware inside the CPU that plays this footage back. So if you have any of the H.265 footage, you're going to be fine. If you work on any of the H.265 footage, either your processor or your GPU can play it back. In fact, this 422 feels even smoother than this 420. If I look, look at this 420, well, actually, they're all, all equal, very, very similar, so no problem over there. Moving on to another 4K, and this is Canon C200 RAW, okay? So here's some of the uh, timeline over here. 60 frames per second, uh, 4K DCI, this is, and it's playing it back no problem what is playing it back it is the cpu and looks like <laughs> this is this is no problem like this six card gp cpu is absolutely fine editing canon c200 raw this is insane I'm just curious if it's going to play back now when there's two 4K RAWs on top of each other. Oh my word. So look, there's two 4Ks on top of each other and it has no problem playing them back. Still one more 4K codec to check out. This is Red RAW and DCI as well, as you can see. This is uh, UHD and this is a little bit different. This is DCI over there, but plays back no problem. CPU is doing a little bit more. There's 32% on the CPU playing it back. So let's pump the resolution of the footage up a little bit. This is 5K Red Raw now. So if we look at this over here, 5,000 and something pixels horizontally. Uh oh, whoa, okay. And now this is struggling. Look at that CPU 100% and it's quite st struggling here. 5K isn't that good on this one. That's interesting. Seems like this CPU is slightly struggling on the 5K. If we press play, yeah, look, it's not playing it back at 24 frames per second. Yep, we can see that the CPU is definitely the bottleneck. The CPU is 100% and it can't play it back. Let's have a look at 6K. This is 6K B-RAW. B-RAW is very easy to edit. You probably all know that, but let's press play. 24 frames per second, no problem. Timeline performance, very, very smooth. Let's just press play here. Let's have a look what's happening over here. The CPU is very, very lower usage than the red 4K. Red 4K, as you can see, remember, that was um, 30 something percent. This is 22 percent. So it's very easy to play that back and work in here. Let's try red 6K raw. So pressing play and it's playing it back about nine frames per second. Okay. It says it's 24 frames per second, but for definitely it isn't because you can see like, just look how her body's not moving naturally. 9.2 frames per second. It says 24 there, but no, look, it's lagging, completely lagging. 
it's not playing it back properly. 100% yeah CPU is the bottleneck over there. So I guess that's gonna be the point like after 4k it seems like everything is struggling right now. Let's keep going here still with the Canon R5 8k. So a Canon RAW 8k Canon RAW. I mean timeline performance is pretty good nothing to worry over here. Whoa 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 I guess it depends on the codec. DaVinci Resolve doesn't like Red Raw so much, but Canon Raw on DaVinci Resolve is. Look at this. It's playing it back. CPU is about 12% used. It's 8K footage. All the settings are exactly the same. This is insane. So if you've got a Canon R5, and if you're thinking about editing this on DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna be fine. Red 8K RAW, timeline performance, a little bit choppy, playing around here. Like clicking through, it's not that bad, but when I'm just moving the header, it just can't keep up. Let's press play, see what happens. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. See now, it's somehow able to play it back. Okay, depending on the on the codec or things, 25 frames per second was too much. 23976 was fine or fine-ish. So it takes time to get loaded, then catches up and then plays it nicely. Clip changes still plays nicely, 24 frames back. But now one frame more per second and it's still able to not see. No, it can't do it quite. So if it's 8K raw, I guess you could edit something, put the timeline resolution to um, like half resolution and look, you'll be completely fine. Like pressing play, it will be fine. And as you can see, the CPU is a clear bottleneck over here, 100% used. So this is a 12K B raw timeline. Let's see how well does this play back over here. So timeline footage over here is very, very, very good. I mean, struggling a little bit sometimes. Let me just see. Yeah, proxy mode is off. There we go. Press and play, and it's all right. Looks like 12K B-RAW is absolutely fine to edit, no problem over here. So in conclusion, the i5 11600K does a pretty good job. Now, there are some advantages in going with this CPU, um, and that is if you're doing a lot of H.265, that is 422 code encoding or something like that. If you've got some of that footage or 444, then the iGPU inside there has hardware acceleration for that, which is really, really good. And this 11th gen processors are the only ones in the world who have that. Maybe the M1 has that as well, but Intel versus AMD, Intel's definitely got that, whereas AMD doesn't. The downside for this processor setup is that it can't play back so well the red footage. So if you've got any of red footage and you plan to use more than 4K, red footage it's just gonna struggle with this and it can't do it b-raw though for 6k was fine canon r5 8k raw was fine as well so it can do that if it's b-raw or canon raw it's fine but red raw not so easy on davinci resolve okay guys hope this was helpful for you if you want to know the exact test bench uh, like specs i'm gonna leave them in the description below thanks guys for watching as always it's great to have you here. Hit the like button. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.